Hello guys, accounting seems to be quite difficult, isn't it? But I'm here to tell you the very basics of accounting, which will make accounting very easy to all of you. Before we start with the rules of debit and credit, let me introduce myself. I am Dr. Aarti Mudliar, Assistant Professor, Department of Commerce, the Bhopal School of Social Sciences. Dear students, rules of accounting are the basis of recording all day-to-day -day financial business transactions in the journal book. Well, the journal book is maintained in chronological order, that is, date-wise. So, the question arises that why there is a need for rules of debit and credit? So, there are two systems of accounting. The rules of debit and credit is based on two systems, that is, double entry system and single entry system. Double entry system is based on two aspects, that is, debit and credit. Debit has been coined from the term debre, which means to owe, whereas credit has been coined from the term credre, which means to entrust. Let us understand it with the help of an example. Here's Mr. Anil and here's Mr. Mukesh. Mr. Anil wants to buy some goods from Mr. Mukesh and Mr. Mukesh is ready to sell goods to Mr. Anil. But mere intention of buying and selling will not become a transaction to be recorded in the journal book. So, there has to be a transaction. So, here Mr. Mukesh will send the goods to Mr. Anil and Mr. Anil will pay cash to Mr. Mukesh. This becomes a transaction to be recorded in the books of accounts. But the two accounts which are included in this particular transactions are purchases account and cash account. But then there again is a confusion which account is to be debited and which account is to be created. And here comes the rules for debit and credit. So my dear all, rules of accounting provide us the techniques and guidelines to debit and credit the accounts involved in any transactions. To record these debit and credit, we have two approaches, a traditional approach and a modern approach. According to the traditional approach, we divide or we categorize the accounts in three parts, that is real account, nominal account and personal account. But all these accounts together have been classified in two broad categories, that is personal account and impersonal account. The personal account is further categorized in three parts, that is natural person, artificial person and representative person. Whereas, the impersonal account has been further categorized in two parts, that is real account and nominal account. Real account includes all the assets. The assets have been further divided into tangible real account and intangible real account. Whereas, nominal account has been categorized in two parts, that is all the losses and expenses and all the incomes and gains. Let us understand it one by one. So, first we move to personal account. Personal account has been categorized in three parts, as I said earlier, the natural person, artificial person and representative person. So let us understand the natural person. All the natural persons are human beings. So that is all the transactions which are related to human beings are included in natural person. For example, the owner or the debtor or the creditor. Debtors are the people who owe us, whereas creditors are the people to whom we owe. We come to the artificial person. Artificial person are not human beings. These are created by law. Artificial person can include various companies like banks, Tata, BHEL or Amazon. I hope you have understood that we can conduct transactions with these artificial person as well. Now comes representative person. Representative person are the accounts which represent a person or a group of persons. These are naturally the nominal accounts which become outstanding or accrued and then we call them representative personal account. For example, salary outstanding to an employee is the amount unpaid to an employee. Therefore, the salary outstanding represents the employee to whom the salary has been unpaid. The other accounts can be prepaid rent account, accrued commission account, etc. 
So now we move to the impersonal account. As I said earlier, the impersonal accounts are those accounts which do not affect any person or a group of person. So the impersonal account are divided in two categories, that is real account and nominal account. We start with real accounts. The real accounts include all the assets of a business enterprise. The real accounts can be divided in two parts, tangible real assets and intangible real assets. Tangible real assets includes all the assets which can be touched, seen or measured. So the examples of tangible assets are plant and machinery, building, furniture or the unsold stock kept in the godown. We now move to the intangible real account. Intangible real account are those accounts which cannot be touched or seen but it has value for the business and it helps in running the business. The examples are copyright, patents and uh, trademarks etc. The second impersonal account is nominal account. The nominal account includes all the losses and expenses and all the incomes and gains. All the nominal expenses or incomes and gains are temporary account. Why are they temporary account? Because they are not carried forward to the next year and they are transferred to the profit and loss account of the current year itself and the result is evaluated to calculate the capital. The examples of nominal account are salary, commission, rent, etc. There can be different Incomes also like sales account, discount received, etc. So the examples of nominal account are first the expenses and losses like purchases, salary, insurance premium, rent account and other expenses. The incomes are the sales revenue and the discount received, etc. Now the most important thing, once we have understood the classification of accounts into real, nominal and personal, we will move to the rules of each account. We start with the personal account. The rule for personal account is debit the receiver and credit the giver, which means debit the person who receives benefit from the business and credit the person who gives benefit to the business. The rule for real account is, mind it, real account includes all the assets. So the rule for debit and credit is debit what comes in and credit what goes out, which means debit all the, expense, all the assets that comes in the business and credit all the assets that go out of the business. Now the last nominal account. As I said, nominal account includes all the expenses and losses and all the incomes and gains. So the debit credit rule is debit all the expenses and losses and credit all the incomes and gains. Now, practice time. So let's have practice one by one. Let's take first example where I will tell you the journal entry related to real account. The example is purchase furniture for cash. Now let us understand it in six steps. Number one, understand the transaction first of all very clearly. Second step, understand the accounts being affected in this particular transaction identify the type of the account. Third step, classify the transaction into each category. Then apply the rule for debit and credit and here you are with your own journal entry. So as I said that first transaction is purchase furniture for cash. So the first account being affected is furniture account. The second account included in this transaction is cash account. The type of furniture and cash both are assets. Both assets belong to real account and now we will apply the rule. Debit what comes in and credit what goes out is the rule for real account. So furniture is coming in the business and cash is going out of the business. Now which account will be debited? Yes, furniture account will be debited and cash account will be credited as furniture is coming in and cash is going out. So here we have the journal entry. The format for journal book is given as follows. First, the date column. Second, the particular column which mentions the details. Third is ledger folio. Fifth is debit and the next is credit. So your journal entry on a specific date would be furniture account debited to cash account with the given amount. 
So, the journal entry for this transaction will be passed in the journal book. The journal book has five columns. Number one, date. Second, particulars. Third, ledger folio. Fourth, debit. And fifth, credit. We now move to the next example. The next example will relate to the nominal account. The example is rent paid in cash. So, let us follow the same six steps. Read the transaction very carefully. Second step, find out the account affected in this particular transaction. So, the account affected are rent account and cash account. Now, identify the type of account. Rent account is an expense and cash account is an asset. Now, let us classify it into the type of account. Expense belongs to nominal account, whereas cash belongs to real account. Once you have identified the classification of account, you need to apply the rule accordingly. So, nominal account says debit all expenses and losses and mind it, paying salary to the employees is an expense for the business. Therefore, salaries account will be debited. Whereas, when cash is going out of the business, it is credited because the real account rule says credit what goes out and here you have your journal entry. On the given date, you will pass the journal entry as rent account debited to cash account with the given amount. Now, the next example is related to personal account. Let us understand the same example when we have purchased furniture for cash. Suppose if we have purchased the furniture on credit from say Mahid Purwala. So, let us understand the transaction. Furniture purchased from Mahid Purwala. Now, the two accounts affected in this particular transaction is one, furniture account and second, Mahid Purwala, the creditor. Furniture belongs to which type of account? Yes, these are assets. And Mahid Purwala being a creditor is a personal account. Now, we will classify them into the corresponding accounts. Asset belongs to real account and a creditors belongs to personal account. We will apply the rule now. Real account says debit what comes in, so furniture has come in the business, hence furniture will be debited. Whereas the personal account says credit the giver. So Mahit Purwala has given us the furniture, so Mahit Purwala account will be credited. And here we have the journal entry. So on the given date when you have purchased furniture on credit from Mahit Purwala, the entry would be furniture account debited to Mahit Purwala with the given amount. I hope you all have understood the traditional approach. So children, I hope this video has been very useful to all of you to understand the very complicated concept of rules of debit and credit. You can watch it many a times whenever you feel any difficulty in passing the journal entries and applying the rules of debit and credit. You can watch this video again and again and understand it in a better way. Thank you and wait for more videos.